VCR there? Yeah, I have a VCR <laughs> uh, VHS player. I haven't seen one even in a long time. Oh, really? What are you playing? You uh, I mean, I got a bunch of VHS. I got all the Disneys. Okay. I got all the Disneys. I got uh, Shanghai Noon, Shanghai Nights. Okay. I got yeah. the first couple uh, Star Wars. Nice. Yeah. Are, are VHS cheap still or have they gone back around oh or... no yeah they're i mean they're, they're not 20 bucks anymore you yeah know, like they used to be i just saw something that said uh um best buy is going to stop selling blu-rays and dvds which is <laughs> like that's like the one of the best places to go at this point yeah to for get sure those. gosh man that, that's great what are they going to sell in best buy <laughs> is it just uh, phone chargers now <laughs> i got this uh i got this this um the mouse. The yeah. mouse there, you know, you get some odds and ends yeah, there. Yeah, but you, you didn't know. even get the computer there. You got it at the Apple store. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> uh, Mallory got this computer actually sent to her when she did that tech boot camp. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And I think if I was going to get a new one, I might go to Costco. Yeah? Yeah. They got a good computer They got deals. a good, yeah. Good On Macs or just Yeah. All? Well, in general, but okay. I'm, a, I'm yeah. a Mac guy. I'm in the system. You in the system at all? Uh well I just got the iPhone. Oh so, yeah, yeah yeah how's that? It's interesting you iPhone people you iPhone lifers I really congratulate somebody when that text changed. I w- I almost did when I saw <laughs> that blue text on your. I mean it's been dozens of people being like oh dude did you just get an iPhone? Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Well we want you to be accepted and feel good about yourself. I mean it's a way better phone for Thank sure. Thank you. It okay. is a way better phone, but I do think it's harder to use. It's less intuitive. Well everyone says it's more intuitive. I disagree. I guess since you're coming, you're you're jumping. Uh, yeah, that's probably some of it. But just the way you even like close apps is a little more difficult than. How would you do it on the other phone? Android, everything has an X essentially. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so if there's no X, you're like, I don't know what well, to do. Well, you swipe it away and then it doesn't really ever go away. Like, you know, you yeah, open you Google and the all the tabs are still open. For and I have 72 tabs. <laughs> and you don't like that? You like keeping your tabs organized? I like it, yeah, under 10. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, we all got our things. You know, we're all anal in certain ways. Sure. <laughs> Interesting that that's yours. Is it because of the USB-C connection? We're getting real deep. Uh, No, it's not. Because that's the... a universal thing now. Yeah, that is universal now. I was aggravated that I paid, like, you know, an absorbent amount of money for an iPhone and then it does not come with a charger. <laughs> it didn't? No. I had to buy a charger. Not even the so- card? Uh, I came with the cord, but not yeah, the yeah. block. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's ours, too. We just upgraded to the seven, 17s or whatever they are now. Uh, 15s, I 15s, think. 15s, yeah. yeah. The iOS is like 17 or whatever. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. see, that's even more confusing. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not think about it too hard. Yeah. You know? that's... Just up, update when you need to update, okay. and uh, don't think about it too hard. Yeah, I mean, it has way more storage than any Android ever had. Ooh, how many gigs? Uh, it's like 120 or something. I oh, think, right. right. I got 250. You got 250? Yeah, yeah, I got a lot of audiobooks and yeah, uh, that makes stuff sense. on there. And I, I video, I've been videoing my sets a little bit more. Have you found yourself doing that at all? No, I'm terrified to leave the phone by itself on the other side of the room. Because <laughs> <laughs> it costs so much? <laughs> yeah, because now it's worth something. <laughs> if someone yeah, steals yeah. it, they can actually sell it. And Android, you can leave up there all day. No one's going to take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. All right, we got Ed Bell here. I'm not doing intros anymore. Ed Bell, local okay. comic. You may recognize him from the Young Guns episodes we did years ago. Many, many years ago. Yeah, do you remember way. when we like had like five chairs in here? Yeah. <laughs> you were part of one? Yeah, that was a lot of people. That was, that was the pre-pandemic. That was. Yeah, yeah. Was that 20? No, and you weren't, you weren't necessarily a Young Gun at that point. I think you were the oldest gun I was of the Young Guns. Probably, yes. Yeah. yeah, and you just recorded an album. How's I that did. feel? How what happened there? Good. Yeah, Were we record- just like I want to do it or uh so Sammy Anzer, um and Enemy I, of the podcast. Yes, enemy of the podcast. I'm sure he's been on eight episodes. Did he mention me? I don't know. He's been on one. <laughs> and we tried to squash the beat. We did squash the beat. Oh, okay. Now I think it's fun. Uh he approached me with the idea of recording like a split, like oh. a split EP, so we'd each have something to release. Um just because, you know, we live in the age of content and you have to always have to be trying to it's put king, baby. something out. Yeah. And then it kind of just grew to the point where we're like, okay, I guess we're both going to just record albums on the, the same night. Um, He got a weekend at Comic Sense. So he was like, do you want to come and set up some mics and, and do it? So I asked all my audio friends for all of their gear so that we could use it for free. And uh, yeah, yeah, we just recorded a whole weekend. And it went really well. Um, It went really, really well. We have like one fantastic show and then the, for both of you yes okay 
Like he had a good, good Friday and you had a good Saturday or something. Oh, uh, it was like... both. We had a great, great Friday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thursday. It was funny. We started on a Thursday. And... So you record three sets? Yes. Yeah, so we recorded Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Actually, two shows on Saturday. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So you got a lot of footage to. Uh, yeah. It will definitely edit. be the bulk well, of footage, one. Audio. Yeah. It'll be bulk of one show and then probably like punch in some stuff or, you know, when you like stammer or. Yeah. Yeah. You want to get rid of that. For sure. Um, yeah. It was cool. Uh, Thursday was funny though because uh, I bombed so bad. <laughs> okay, what happened? What do you think? Were you just feeling off? Your uh, iPhone not charging? What? Um, I don't know. I think I was feeling a little off. Uh, I think I was also just a little psyched out. Probably. I mean, we're recording in Boulder, and you know, a lot of times comics will be like, "I don't know, man. Boulder's hard audiences." Do you and find that? Not necessarily, you, but you you fit in there. You're I, one of them. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I I do feel. In Boulder, I have to razz them a little bit to uh, to get them invested in the show. Like, roast like, them a little? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, like, hey, you're rich. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Like, call okay. them out a little bit. Because, like, if I'm doing jokes about, like, being poor and stuff, it's like, yeah, I know you guys aren't poor, but, like, you get it, you know? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Imagine, yeah. <laughs> you read a book. You Yes. You read Dickens. <laughs> absolutely. He was poor. Uh, <laughs> you liked him. You can laugh at this joke. Oh, there you go. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I didn't, I did not connect on Thursday and then. Yeah. You just felt like there was a disconnect with the audience. Yeah. Sammy did good. Um, but then we did Friday and I was like, oh no, Sammy did fine on Thursday. He fucking like smashed on, on Friday. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, I, I had a good set Friday too. Do you have anything on your Instagram? Like what'd you, dr- did you put any uh, thought into your outfit? Um, you no, I just wear, I'm just wearing a hoodie. I mean, it's just an album, so it's mostly focused oh, on right. audio. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we we did we video. did throw up. We had Jeff Stonic there uh, to help uh, uh, record, and he threw up some video cameras. So we we do have video footage available. Um, I don't know what I'm sure we'll use it for marketing and stuff. But you're not TikToks. Yeah, exactly. A lot of tie dye. A lot of tie dye on you, bud. Yeah, you know they had a sale. So. <laughs> That's how you fit in in Boulder. You're like yeah, tie dye. So nothing on your Instagram yet. You, this is wasn't your drip. Uh no, I uh, I I don't even think. Nope, I'm done with the hoodie. I wore my green tie dye hoodie, which kind of looks like that tie dye shirt. Right there. But uh, that one's yellow. I think it's a yellow. It's a weird like tan. I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. I don't really put that much thought into my outfit. Okay. You do. You do have to. Um, obviously, as a comedian, do you wear a hat? No hat. No hat. I almost never wear a hat when I do stand up. I find it more difficult to do stand up. With a hat? Uh, yeah, because it covers part of your face. And you're like, they need to get a full view of this head of hair. Well, no, like if it hides your eyes, I don't know. You can learn to like milk laughs out of people with your oh, eyes. Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. You know? No, yeah, it's all, all, it's all your instrument. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So if your hat is covering, like especially depending on how you're lit, how the stage is, sometimes it could cast a whole, a whole shadow yeah, on your yeah. face. And it just makes it more difficult. So maybe I should use a, use a hat. Yeah, no, I think <laughs> it's stronger. It's not because I don't think of you as a high energy guy. So, but I mean, the fact that you're still like using your body. Yeah, I wouldn't. A, yeah, I wouldn't call myself it, high energy know. at all. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're still, um, you know, using all the things you have at your disposal. Yes, absolutely. I do find that expressions help sell. Yeah, yeah. a lot of jokes. I would say most jokes. More even guys that you think aren't doing like act outs and stuff, they're doing stuff to make it make the joke sell yeah yeah you're selling it with yeah, your you, eyes you have to you have yeah, to sell yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> no yeah I, told, I get it yeah okay so you set up all the equipment why did you pick the place in boulder that is sammy's favorite club he he really they're likes... calling it a club now it's like underneath a, yeah, a hotel yeah. right they dedicated a, a room to it oh, so they're okay. calling it the yeah. comic sense comedy club i believe who's booking that uh jesse carter okay never heard of him uh so he's like he started comedy like 10 years ago and then stopped for a while and then came back. Interesting. Yeah. I think maybe all up in Boulder, so maybe that's why oh, okay. you, you yeah, don't know yeah. him. Um, but yeah. Uh, so he's been doing- To never come down from Boulder in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that doesn't seem that weird. It's like a mountain man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it seems like a very Boulder thing to do. <laughs> I mean, everybody, well, I mean, like, Jacob Rupp came down, you know, yeah. uh, Cody that, Spiker. Yeah, that's true. There was like a, a migration. Yeah, uh, I think you have to because I mean, it, most of those people started at the college Bromwell, or whatever. Yeah, scandal noted. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's yeah, a little club up there. It holds like fifty people. Uh, he he just thought it'd be like a really accurate portrayal of like 
what we do, like what most of like our you shows. you and he do. Yes, because we're mostly we're doing shows for 50 people at okay. this point in our career. Uh-huh. I mean, we could have rented out a theater and then put a bunch of money into advertising to make sure it was like packed out. That's kind of what Katie Bowman's doing. With, yeah, that's, I think, that, that's, uh, uh, that's definitely a way to do it. Um, but we, more important to us was having more than one shot at it. Okay. So we'd rather do, yeah, four or five shows for 50 people than one show for like 200 people. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Less pressure. And also, it's just more real to what we do. Which is? Just smaller the shows. shows. Okay. Yeah, like, because you can, you can hear how the room sounds on all, uh, like, album recordings. You yeah. could tell if it was recorded in a theater. You could tell if it was an arena, a comedy club. And this sounds like it's in a room with 50 people. Are, are you listening to a lot of albums? Or were you, were you like, yeah, that's researching? My, uh, that, that's always been my preferred way to listen to comedy. Oh, okay. Albums. I mean, some people are so great that you do want to see them and what they're doing uh, on that stage. But, yeah, I, I like albums a lot. I, I don't think I necessarily need the video component um, unless it is truly something special. Um, but most people are just doing jokes, you know, at yeah, the end yeah. of the day. So you get it just listening to it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's how I started listening to comedy was uh, mostly through albums. Seinfeld's big one. Ray yeah. Romano at... Uh, Great, fantastic, at, yeah. Yeah, the one he did at the Carnegie Hall. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kill a cow, give it shoes. Yeah, so I... But then I guess after, you know, Netflix and stuff and the ease of just watching those, you know, streaming, I just never went back to an album. Yeah, so. I got into them really deep when I was working in an office and uh, I was doing a job that I didn't have to talk to anyone all day. So I would listen to an album every single day. Wow. OK. I did that with music for a little bit. I was yeah. like, I should try and listen to more music. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, maybe more comedy would be helpful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it is interesting just to hear what everybody's doing. You know? it, what do you you said you can really tell the difference in where they're where they're recording. Yes, so absolutely. So was it important for you to do it at a smaller place? Um, I just think it was easier to to fill it out. Okay, yeah, because um, just so the the guest who doesn't know or the listener who doesn't know it, like you'll take different clips uh, yeah. from different jokes, I guess, from different nights and put it together in the one album. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because so, like, if you did like fumble a a, a wording or something like exactly. that, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It'll be probably 80% from one night, and then, yeah, maybe some punch-ins or whatever. Right, right. But the smaller room, you like... I just, uh, I didn't put that much thought into it. Sammy organized a lot of this, and then once I heard the recording, I was like, oh, that, that sounds cool. Like, it's so just, you've listened to it? Yeah. I mean, it's not mixed or anything. It's just raw files. Yeah. But you're excited by it? Yeah, I'm very excited cool. about it. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know, I like that it's in a small room, because it seems like... It's very punk rock. It's the kind of it's the side of comedy I really like, like the DIY side. Mm-hmm. The, you know, no one asked us to do this. We're just gonna do it. We just want to make it because we want to make something. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like if it ends up being something that's cool. If it doesn't, who cares? We'll just go make another thing another yeah. time. You know? Yeah, that is very punk rock. I mean, that's why we all started doing this because we wanted to tell jokes. Yeah, you know. And you did come from like a punk rock band. Yeah. Like you were doing Absolutely. music before that's you came. Hundred percent, what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, have you listened to the new Fallout Boy album at all? I, I have not. But <laughs> I've been listening like to it. that a lot <laughs> recently. <laughs> I, actually, I'd probably like it. Yeah, I like. I feel like it's a return to form. Okay, the last couple albums I wasn't that into. Yeah, they started getting pretty grandiose, having a lot of piano parts. And yeah, stuff. They still have a little more orchestra in this one, yeah. but it's like more rocky. Okay, than, that's than electronic. Hear, I felt like you can hear the guitars again. <laughs> yeah, <I> guess <laughs> that's cool. I like them. Yeah, I like me all too. That kind of music. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Is you more of a Fallout Boy or uh, My Chemical Romance guy? Uh, Fallout Boy for sure, but I think that it largely based on my proximity to Chicago. Was, we were four hours away, so we were probably influenced by that. You more. see him live at all? No, no, they yeah, I've never seen him. Would you? Yeah, absolutely. Especially now. You like going to music live? Yeah, I think it's like the best. It, I think it's way more fun than comedy. It's crazy. Interesting. <laughs> well, I was listening to someone talk about music. It was Andrew Huberman. He does like this. He's like a scientist guy. Yeah, uh, yeah. He does like these very in-depth podcasts on different subjects. And he was talking about music, the effects of music on the body and the brain. And he was talking about uh, when mu- you see music live, like there's like a vibration. Like you yeah. get attuned with. Yeah. Like you, you can sync your heartbeats up and stuff. Yeah. It's yeah, crazy. It's a, yeah. And like when you're with a bunch of different people, it's like this communal experience. So. Yeah, I guess I've never really done that too much. I've gone to a couple concerts, but it's just like too many people. <laughs> it's like too much. Sure, I I can understand that too. 
there is a lot of people, but it is cool. I, I just think it translates better to a large amount of people than than comedy necessarily does. Because like comedy in a stadium is you know probably sure. probably yeah. cool, but it probably sucks if you're in that last seat. <laughs> yeah, I heard uh, Evan Joe was talking about going to see Burt Kreischer at Red Rocks. Yeah, and he was like it wasn't fun at all because they were up in the nosebleeds. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, you couldn't really hear like it just wasn't that good of an experience. But with music, if you're in the nosebleeds, you can at least still feel that bass. Yeah, you know, yeah. You're more of a part of it. Yeah. So yeah, having the small room, do you think you could attune? There's still something going on there. This communal experience, attuning with people's vibes yeah and like yeah i i think it we captured it well like i i riff a little bit so you know there's moments of that that we captured and i think you could tell it's like uh yeah it's a very like i don't know i think it just does a good job of capturing like, the small rooms are like what i like about comedy because people take more risks in smaller rooms mm -hmm. i feel like because there's less pressure you take more risks absolutely like just riffing and like uh, having more. If there's only 50 people there versus if I look out and there's 200 people there. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm definitely taking more risks when there's 50. Sure, yeah, yeah. What's a risk? I mean, just doing something off the cuff. Okay. Either riffing or crowd work. or yeah. I don't really do crowd work, but I'll riff basically with myself, you know, mm. about something. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Are you like question answering yourself or is it like, you know, you're just... Waxing poetic. More waxing poetic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I'll just, like, you know, do something, like, improvised, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, just try to make, you know, the performance a little more unique. Also, make it a little more human, because if you just... I'm a very joke-heavy guy, and if I just do jokes at you for, you know, 30 or 45 minutes, it's a lot. You know, it, I don't seem like a real person if I just keep throwing pre-written joke after pre-written joke. Interesting, you think? Yeah, I think I have to connect a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. It's a lively um, art. Yeah, to get them to buy into the whole thing I'm doing. So you think like, uh, who's like a one-liner guy? Most one-liner guys are actually connecting with their character on a deeper level than people give them credit for. Okay. Like, uh, like, you know, Dimitri Martin is a one-liner guy, but so is Stephen Wright. But they play completely different characters and the way they connect with the audience is different. Yeah. People kind of discount guys like that because they're like, because it seems like they don't have a big personality, but having a small personality kind of is their big personality. Yeah, yeah so it's always the, the disconnect is like something, what they're latching on to. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They're just playing with it in a different way. Hmm. Would you say your comedy's changed at all from like when we first had you on the podcast doing your Young Guns thing to now? Like we're more of a storyteller? Seems like you're not really a one-liner guy. Um, I mean, I, I've always been a joke guy. You know, I write like short jokes. Yeah, you've, you've like risen pretty quick i feel like in the ranks and then i push them together <laughs> thank you i don't really know what that means <laughs> well anymore. you're you were headlining fairly quickly and if, sure yeah, so yeah you were uh you won that clean comedy contest yes so comedy works pushed you a little bit and you yes, had like absolutely. a credit a good credit pretty yeah, quick and yeah they definitely supported me early early on after after that yeah that helped me get a lot of clean gigs which then helped me that i when i started headlining it was almost exclusively clean um, because there's like four guys that can do that. So. <laughs> but you don't even think of yourself as like a clean comic, right? You're like, no, I just write jokes. Yeah, and like I do have like a block of dirty jokes. Like I even did it like on for the album recording. I did it as like, uh, the, here's all the dirty jokes in a row or whatever. Okay. So like, if you didn't want that, you could just not listen to the last track. Okay, you know, Interesting. Uh, you were thinking in tracks. And, yeah, like, that's how you set up your set. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's a different yeah. medium for sure. Is it just an uh, a amalgamation of all your jokes, or did you have had like a through line? Was there anything? I mean, it's basically just like the headlining set I've been doing the last few years. It's like I haven't seen it. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. It's. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mostly do it on the road, honestly. Like, yeah, because you're out there. You're out there doing shit. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I don't do a lot of headlining in. Say Denver. you're a road dog. A road, road dog. Road, road, I don't road. think that exists. Come on, give like us a, a little road. No, come on. <laughs> I don't think that's like the same <laughs> thing anymore. Like no, the road, yeah, like, the road just so different than it was when people were doing it back then. Yeah, like they could set up big gigs or like you know a row of gigs, right? Yeah, and it was like these gigs kind of had their own following in a way. And there was like an established route yeah, you could take, absolutely. Yeah. And now it's very much like DIY. Like you contact the venue and like set up a show yourself. And did you get connections with those venues through Comedy Works setting you up like that way, or? Um. So. No, with with the Midwest stuff, I was kind of doing that at the same time that was all happening at the same time. Really, all that was from doing comedy festivals okay, and meeting bookers and stuff. And then just like, 
going back home for the holidays and like doing an open mic and home is uh where iowa iowa yeah. iowa yeah like doing an open mic and like meeting someone and then three li- years later like they open a comedy club oh interesting it's just yeah, like yeah. that's how the stuff kind of yeah. works it's like you just meet everyone and then years down the line they end up doing different stuff than you were doing and yeah you just help each other out uh but the comedy work stuff i after i did that contest it led me into just getting like I guess what do you call them, like private gigs or whatever, okay. just because it was like a little credit I could put in EPK or whatever, and yeah, it just got me EPK, electronic press kits. Oh, okay, is that what they're called? <laughs> Damn, yeah. yeah, that's an old term. I mean, I don't know if anyone ever says it anymore. Sometimes bookers will ask you for one. What does that entail? Just like a clip? Yeah, like clip any credits you have, like you, you know, if you it's have, just like a resume. It's like a you resume. Just basically yeah. put out like. Yeah, for sure. Your credits in a resume style thing. Yeah, absolutely. Like one comedy works uh, clean contest. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then it would let hey, what else more bookings or whatever. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Also, it just got the scene to like. Anytime you do like well at comedy works, like the scene notices, and they you just get more gigs off of it. Yeah, because I've been trying to. I want to get out more and do more uh, stuff. Because I've I've been, you know, kind of frustrated. Feel like a little stagnant in in Denver. You know, not really getting a lot of uh, uh, spots. You know, sure. I feel like the class I came up with, you know, has Dog. passed me. They're all dead now. <laughs> yeah, they've all either passed me, moved away, uh, or and like these new kids. You know, they're all starting their own thing, and they have their group of their clicks, basically. Sure. You know, or like the roast thing's very popular right now. Yeah, have you done a lot of those? Uh, no, I'm so glad that I started comedy before that was like a nest. <laughs> I think it's like you have to do it now. Yeah, like, I don't want to do that. My ego's too fragile. Yeah, I just I don't know. I I don't like being mean to people really. Um, and to write good roasts, you you gotta cut deep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I don't envy that, but it's cool. It's cool. It's catching on and stuff, but I get what you're saying. You don't want to do that. You kind of feel like you're yeah, feeling like there's no man's time where like, I want to do more. So anyway, so I think the way to do that is you got to leave yeah, and, and then get more time outside and then you can come back and maybe do more time here. For sure. I mean, it's all how people perceive you. So if you look like you're busy outside of town, people yeah, yeah. start booking you in town. Interesting. Yeah. That's a good, it's a good, um, perspective. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's why I started doing like road gigs because I wasn't getting booked in Denver, and okay. I was like, I gotta go learn how to get better at this because I'm not getting booked in my own town, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I just drive out into like Oklahoma. Atlanta and I have some friends in Atlanta that I might be able to stay with so I was like that seems like a good easy yeah. first place to go uh, so I reached out on the Atlanta like Facebook page like hey I'm coming to Atlanta no one's gone back to me I emailed some people like Katie gave me their emails no one's gone. well they were like hey we're don't, we don't have anything so yeah I mean it's hard at first honestly you have to get vouchers for people to even read your your messages I mean the way I was able to get vouchers is doing comedy festivals okay festivals might be a yeah, uh, foot in. That's I, I that that's what they're for essentially is mm. figure out what region of the country you want to go to and find out what festivals they have in that area, and then you'll you'll go and there won't be like official industry there or whatever. But every comic at that festival has their own show and their own home scene, uh-huh. and then you hit them up and you go do the shows. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, guess I mean, it's it, like. It takes forever. Yeah, it's, it's going like to take the, some time, yeah. This isn't like an overnight thing. It's like years of compounding, yeah, yeah network yeah. building or whatever. But it's like not, I mean, you're really becoming friends with people and stuff. Hopefully. <laughs> that That's the only way it works, is if you actually have a genuine connection with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. If you just are asking people for favors all the time, it, it yeah, it's not going to work ultimately. Mm. I think you actually have to be invested in each other. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I've made some good connections through the podcast. For sure. But, you know. Booking things around that is, you know, not uh, few and far between, you know, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, festivals for sure. And then, you know, literally just any area of the country, you have like a friend that already lives and you can go stay with them, yeah, go stay yeah. with them, go, go to some open mics. Some of the smaller scenes, if you go to an open mic, you're going to meet all four of the bookers in that scene, <laughs> you know, like, and then you go do their shows. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's a good uh, starting point. Good how to get started right there. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. You're uh, going to do great, JD. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> okay. I'm still pulling for you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Hey, can I do your show? <laughs> uh, yeah. You want to do Odell? You can do Odell. Uh, you, you and like uh, Austin Black have been going out a lot, you know? So like, was he just like, hey, can I follow you? Or like, were you? No. Like, it's... You just like hanging out with him? So like, it was just like a natural extension? Yeah. So that's kind of a funny thing that happens when you start working. When all your friends and y'all start working at the same time, you all, you, you don't see each other anymore. Right. Because you're all doing the same spots on the same shows. So if you're getting like the feature spot or the headlining spot on a show, like Austin and I are like, you know, the same level comedian or whatever. So if we are going to do your show or whatever, you're going to have us probably feature or whatever. Which I did have people drop out. So if you're available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but because you consider both of us to be features for a bar show or whatever, we almost then would never run into each other. Or, yeah. On the same show. Yeah. So okay. then you, because you're not at mics as often anymore, you just stop seeing each other. Yeah, so. I don't see Austin at all anymore at the mics. So now it's like, if we want to <laughs> see each other, we plan road gigs. You know? Okay, it's yeah, like, yeah. this is how I hang out with my friends now. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So you and Austin are pretty good friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're pretty good friends. We're also both from the same area of Iowa, okay, so yeah, it yeah, helps yeah, our draw if we co-headline. Oh, okay. Significantly. A lot of co-headlining, huh? Uh, Yeah. Well, is yeah. that like less time for each other or like do you it just do... means one of us ha- like depends on the gig like sometimes we do two nights at a place okay and one will and one we'll just alternate okay or we'll just both do 30s and... you guys rez each other on the road you guys <laughs> pranking each other no it's so funny we talk about that all the time how like <laughs> in the 80s you know after shows we'd probably be doing like cocaine <laughs> yeah like yeah. trying to get laid and stuff and like we just go get like a pizza and play uno like it's <laughs> yeah i could see you guys doing like a tiktok where you just have a, a bag in the back and you're like austin <laughs> open that bag dude it's dog shit oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah no no pranks i mean fun with friends yeah you know i feel very lucky i get to drive around the country and just go explore with my my friends would you That's suggest nice. driving versus uh flying because i was looking at air, uh tickets to austin in november yeah and it's like gonna be 600 bucks you know round trip yeah, I mean, the reason we drive is just because we can do gigs along the way, and a lot of times yeah. you can find... So you've been able to build a network that way. Yes, yeah, absolutely. You could find small towns that, like, if you do comedy there, it, it's going to back out just because they've never had comedy there. So it's going to back, they're going to back out. No, it's going to pack out. Oh, like, okay. like there'll be lots of people, like you can make good money by going to markets that no one wants to go to. Like um, where? Give me a name. I'll go. I mean, it's just like Cheyenne. <laughs> <laughs> pick, pick two major cities and, uh, anywhere in between those two. So like, you're like Googling venues, like, what, yeah, I mean, like you just comedy at, venues or what, or how are you putting these things together? Uh, so, I mean, originally it was like breweries stuff, okay, breweries. Stuff. um, that makes sense. but then it like, you know, as we figured out the marketing thing more. It, it, we started like, like you and Austin, or you, uh, me, Austin, and Ben Daly. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, as we figured out the the marketing thing more, it was like, okay, I think we can rent a theater and move enough tickets that we'll we'll still make money or whatever. And started doing that, and now we've gotten to this interesting, cool point where there's all like these DIY clubs, like hundred seater clubs, um, that are starting to give us chances and letting us headline nights, which is cool. It's very exciting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it helps that we could be like, hey, the last time we were in this area, we sold X amount of tickets. Um, Does anyone ask you to prove that? Or are you just like... No, or I'll there? send pictures. And we always okay. you know, take pictures like us from the stage holding the camera looking like an idiot. Okay, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that's a, good, that's a good way of proving it. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I, a lot of this stuff is just marketing as well. Yeah, yeah. You got to be funny. You got to have like a product to sell. Yeah, when you show up, you got to... But that's like... Deliver. Ha- yeah. Being funny is kind of the bare minimum. To <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to make a run at this, you got to like figure out the other stuff, or you're gonna waste all your money paying other people to figure out the the stuff for you. Interesting. So you're making posters. You, I mean, like that stuff, or that's not what you're waste, you're using uh, your time for. Uh, yeah. I mean, we do when we do our, like our little road runs or whatever. I'll make a week's worth of posters, stuff like that. I used to send them like to the venues and stuff, and now since we're doing like these like indie comedy clubs it's like less of a necessity because they have more of an established presence um but like if we were just doing bars we would send them posters and be like please hang these up you know we'd market it you know on the internet or whatever and when you say marketing you're just like building up that resume like making that look good that you send out to people well e- ekg or whatever mar- you're marketing EP. yourself to the venue then you also have to market the show to the, the audience okay yeah yeah so i mean 
That's a whole nother podcast, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bit one tip for marketing the show. Uh, one tip, figure out what you're selling that other people aren't. So like with Comedy Save the Video Star, we have the video aspect. That's very unique. Yeah. Push that part. Yes. Okay. That's the most unique. Multimedia show. Yep. You're offering something no one else is. We need a projector. You don't <laughs> exactly. have it. We can't do it there. Yeah, can we borrow one? <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. Does yeah. anybody have a screen? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, sometimes there's a little bit of that. So that, that show is like a cool show where like if you go and you started doing comedy festivals and then you met some people, it's very likely they would ask you to come back and do your show there because it's okay. such a unique show. Yeah, yeah. And then that's like an even better way to like meet comics because then they're doing your show. Yeah, yeah. That gets exactly where I got the idea from was at the Trinidad Festival. Uh, a couple people I had on were like, dude, you should like make a sizzle reel basically and yeah. start submitting it to festivals. Yeah, because it's a very good show. It's a very unique show. Thank I haven't, you. I haven't yes. seen anybody else Come do on. it. I mean, besides- You better not or I'm going <laughs> to sue your ass. <race. laughs> yeah. uh, the idea of riffing over music videos is my idea only. Yeah. Take that, Mike Judge. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hack. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, are you available the 26th? Because I had two people drop out. The 26th? <laughs> I'm not. I'm Dude, not. what is it? This kind of, I don't know. Should I be, I wanted to be mad about this. Okay, I had them booked a while ago. Okay? Sure. And then they messaged me. It's a couple. And they're like, hey, I'm going to surprise X person by, uh, you just got to look at the poster and know who I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but hey, I got to get engagement somehow. All right. Uh, so they were like, hey, I'm going to surprise this person with their uh, tickets to a show for their favorite band for their birthday. It's on the same day as your show. If I help you book it or get two more people, would you be okay with us dropping out? Sure. And I was like, well, no. <laughs> yeah. But obviously you don't want to be there. You're going to not want to be there. Right. So go ahead you know because i don't want you to resent being there and then just drop out anyway for sure that gets stuff i mean i mean booking is just a whole nother nightmare you're always gonna yeah have, booking is a fucking, you're always gonna have people grind. dropping out people getting a sick day of or whatever or people just getting a better paying gig and going hey dude sorry i yeah yeah, yeah. gotta do this gig that pays 10 times yeah, but, more or yeah. whatever <laughs> And I remember uh, I used to get those messages from people when I was running like a uh, bunch of brewery shows, and I'd be like, "What? You don't want to do my hundred dollar gig or whatever? Why yeah. are you dropping out day of or whatever?" And like now, you know, many years later, I'm like, "Oh, I get it, because you want to eat food and pay your rent. That's <laughs> that's why you had to take the the better paying gig." Yeah, I recently uh got messaged by uh Denver Comedy Lounge, and he was like, "Hey, do you want to host Thursday night?" And I was like, "I gotta go to work." Yeah, like a fucking. Was on my way to work as he texted me. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, dude. And then I was like, this is one of those defining moments it's not. where everybody in a, in a fucking podcast is like, He's you got to decide what you're going to do with your life. No, it's, it's not like, like are that. You gonna He's a very nice man. Go to your you, mundane you job. message him and go, hi, can I host a different time? He'd go, absolutely. Well, I was like, hey, I'd so love to, blah, blah. He just gave, sent me a heart. Yeah, just follow up in uh, like, you know, a few weeks. A Following month or up. That's, that's the thing. And be like, hey, man, especially if you're willing to host, man, you're, you'll start getting more gig. Oh, interesting. Because hosts have to be super reliable. You have to show up. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and no one wants to do it because it's a thankless job. I mean, mm. I've hosted shows that are killer shows. And at the end of the show, someone come up to me and be like, hey, man. You ever thought about doing comedy? <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> they see you as like being an Applebee's hostess. You know, like yeah, your server. <laughs> your server. <laughs> you just crazy. Work at the club. Everybody else is a comedian, but you work at the club or whatever is what they think. Yeah. You know? yeah. So you just have to like take that. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people can't, you know. But I, I do think hosting is a very good thing to bring up. If you want to get really good at comedy, host as much as you can. All right, man. That is, so no, I should have. Called in at work and gone to host. Huh? I mean, it's I don't know what your life is. Dude, I'm just li- well, I'm like I'm listening to all these fucking books and like you know a podcast with these people who've made it and they're like you got to have a vision and you got to move towards that vision and saying no to certain things and saying yes to this thing. Just listening to Arnold Schwarzenegger on some podcast because he wrote some book. Yeah, absolutely. And he's been doing the rounds. Yeah, yeah. And... I watched that doc, the three parter. <laughs> I like him. I read the book. I didn't read that. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm sure the book's better than the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he doesn't read the whole book. He reads like the intro and then some like generic voice comes on. I'm like, no, I want to hear Arnold read this whole thing. It'd be funny if it was a voice actor doing his voice. <laughs> I, would, I would love that, <laughs> the whole actually. Time. <laughs> um, you do have to have a vision. You have to have a, a, a point that you're aiming your compass at. You do know? you say no or yes to you know day jobs based on that? Um, I mean, 
So I always picked a job where I was working during the day and had nights available so that I could do comedy. Uh, there are many, many, many times where I called in sick to do a gig. Uh, basically, if you look up any time I ever called in sick to a job and typed in my date, uh, my name and then the date, a show flyer will come up. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> like, it would be so easy to bust me. At least you're on shows with flyers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I've made it. I've made it. <laughs> uh yeah, I've been doing that a couple times uh, recently, but yeah, I do. I do think I'm coming, kind of coming to this crossroads with my current job, is because it's nice to you know have money to do things. Yeah, but my nights are taken up. You know, I'm working like one to ten, one to midnight. You know, and it's like I haven't been going out to mics. I haven't, and I've been getting comfortable with that. Sure. You know? So it's like, am I going to shake it up or am I going to settle? You sure, know? for sure. Yeah, and I don't know. It's not. It's not black and white. I, you know, nothing's forever, kind of a thing. But it's hard to get up in the mornings for me. <laughs> yeah, I get it, man. I get it. I think about it like when I was really hitting Mike's hard. Uh, like where you go out until two. And you a. can't do it forever. Yeah, you go out till two a.m. and then you're waking up for, at six a.m. to go to your job. Yeah, Th- yeah. There is a short duration of <laughs> time you can actually sustain that for. Yeah. What would you suggest going to shows for, like, uh, new comics instead of doing open mics at a certain point? Yeah, I do think at a certain point, because if you're only doing mics, you're only watching the worst comedians. Yeah, Janae Burris was just on the show, and she was saying that. Okay, well, I agree then. Uh, <laughs> well, cause, but my thing with her, I was like, people want you to go to shows. They want Janae to go to shows, not me. If I showed up at your fucking brewery shows, you wouldn't be like, hey, thanks for coming, JD. You'd be like, did you buy a ticket? Yeah, but the thing <laughs> is, at first... For sure, you are correct. You are a pest. <laughs> You're a problem. You're like, this guy keeps showing up. But then eventually, Hopefully. when they think of the show, they think, oh, JD, he's always there. Like, you just come, you become front of mind. Mm, someone yeah, doesn't sticky. If someone doesn't show up, oh, look, who, oh, we need someone to kill five minutes. Let's, let's go, JD. Kill five minutes. Yeah. I can do it. Uh, I, I think it's more valuable to, I, I, Anytime you could see like a like a really good headliner, so not necessarily like a like a it's cool hanging out on a bar show and stuff, but if you can go to the club and watch like a headliner, you will learn so much more. And if you honestly assess like what am I doing that's different than what they're doing, um, yeah, I agree. There is a certain point where you just have to you need to start watching more comedy, and hopefully you'll start watching that comedy because you'll be booked on those shows. <laughs> that's the ideal situation. Okay. Uh, but until that point, I mean, I used to hang out at shows like I would. At least once a week, I would I would go to a show just to be a, a part of a show or a comedy work show. Uh, either or. Eventually, mostly comedy work shows. I I hung out there a lot uh, just because you could see amazing headliners for yeah, free. Yeah. Like they just let you sit in the back of the room. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. I was t- trying to take <laughs> advantage of it more back in the day. Yeah, and you still should. Um, yeah, I should. If it's like a Wednesday or a Sunday show, there they never care. You can sit in the back. It's totally cool. And you get to see world-class comedy for free. I mean, people in front of you paid like 30 bucks for the ticket, and you're just there. You <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah. That's pretty I'm cool. I'm there hoping the waitress doesn't ask me if I want a drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't got the money for that tip because yeah, you called pretty, in sick. Yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get it. No, it's just kind of like wherever you're at. Like, if you're not getting into like brewery shows or whatever, or getting booked on bar shows, then go to them and, and like see who's up there and see what is the difference between you and them. Are they better at comedy? Are they more likable people? That's, that's, Are they cool guys? I'm worried that's the bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> Are they cool guys that let everybody use their sound system? You know, like, oh. <laughs> there's many ways to be a part of the scene, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I'd, you know, we'd all like to be like only the funniest people get booked, but that's not true. I mean, you don't even have to be that funny to be to get booked. You just have to yeah, kind of really. be a cool part of the community. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that. But you, JD, I don't know. I would go. I would go hang out at a show, and then definitely go to Comedy Works, man. Yeah, just hang, hang out. Comedy Works, Mark. Are you getting? When are you on again? When am, I was that. just on there. I just hosted for Gavin Matz uh, last Sunday, but I'm I'm gonna be gone for a minute because I'm doing road work. So. Not there for a second. I guess I'm doing new faces. If I just showed up to week. those gigs, uh, I mean, be, it'd be there. You would be there. I would see you there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is true. I'd be like, wow, JD's really putting in the time <laughs> <laughs> to come see you guys over and, oh, and over again. The same show. Yeah. When well, when you go to see these bros like at Comedy Works or anything, are you like stealing anything they're doing? You know, like you know, they say great comics steal. You know, or great artists steal. Sure. Like, I mean, you... it's more like it's never like jokes yeah but it's it's like throwaway comedy work or throwaway you know 
tricks on how to like reel reel the, the crowd back in if they're like being too loud or something like that. Yeah, it's mostly like I'd say it's mostly subconscious at this point, but like early on, like I'd sit in like the back of a club and like you know I'd hear them do the riffs about like local references, and it's like, oh, if you're not from this town, like you gotta show them. Like I am parted. We're all part of this together, though. Like yeah, yeah, I see okay. who you are. Yeah, I I notice the things about you, and then they're more invested in. Like that's an obvious one, but then as you go on, you are picking up tricks and stuff, but you don't necessarily realize it till like I don't know. Every once in a while, you'll say something, you're like. You know, that sounded like another comic. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I I remember hearing, like, Andrew Santino at a show saying something about, like, you know, how to shut down a heckler in a a funny but, like, direct but not, like, super confrontational way. Yes. And I was like, that's good. I like that. The heckler thing I have more learned from how to not do it. Just see people, (laughs) just see it blow up in people's faces. Dude, there's so many people that (laughs) go right to that. And you're like, holy shit, dude. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Like, they're just a little drunk and happy. Yeah, yeah. But you know, heck, hecklers are barely real. <laughs> they barely exist. You don't get it. Well, no, you're you big tall white guy. You know, on stage, I don't sure. think you're getting heckled as much as like. A... I I'm sure I'm sure absolutely that has an impact. Um, but I just mean if you think about all the sets you've ever done versus all the times you've ever been heckled, yeah. the ratio is oh, yeah yeah microscopic. Sure. Like most of the time, you just get to go do your thing up there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So when can the people expect the album to be out? That's a good good question. I don't. Uh, I don't fully know now, uh, right now, but I, uh, I'll come back on the pod and promote it when, <laughs> when I do. I don't know. I, I actually, my brain is just fried from recording it all this weekend. So I'm just glad we got it. I didn't even thought about that. Honestly, all I thought about this whole week is I hope that something doesn't go wrong with the microphones. <laughs> <laughs> you said the one, right? Oh uh, no, we had, we had a bunch of, uh, we had like audience mics set up and then we had different mics were they just sure mics like up on the walls no like, they're on like that no they're they? the h4ns okay yeah you just set those up everywhere uh basically yeah interesting and they're really good though dude yeah these are great mics they're it, great they're recorders. super powerful yeah. and they do a good job this capturing. podcast brought to you by sure <laughs> yeah zoom h4ns <laughs> especially if you point them right at the audience um you have to point so you it. had multiple ones of these or yep. you had okay yeah you pointed at their faces um it catches all the laughs real good. Yeah. And then we used a mic, or then we had one hooked up to the soundboard. There was like a direct out. And then we had a few other mics as well, some like uh, Rhodes lapel mics taped different places just for redundancy's sake, just for backups, um, which I haven't even listened to those yet. I just listened to the, the main recorders. Yeah, so you really did just reach out to people you knew that had equipment and some knowledge yeah and like i i did do some like audio engineering in college so i had like a base level of knowledge uh but um i I have connections for doing music so i just asked my friends like if you were gonna mic this how would you do it yeah yeah. they just all i asked enough of them and they all told me basically the same answer that you have to the mistake people make is putting the recorder behind the audience because then you're recording the the echo yeah yeah you want it basically on the stage pointed so that they hear what we hear when yeah, we're performing yeah. the comedy. You know, we get those direct laughs. And did you, oh yeah, and so you didn't have a lava on your anything? You, no, you we had one like, right behind us though. Gotcha. But yeah, I thought it, we thought it would be too much to be like, yeah, switch them back. Unless you're like, well, like Titus, he just has the earpiece. Yeah, you know what's so funny is not Titus specifically, not Titus, but anybody that doesn't hold the microphone, I give it, or anyone that doesn't use like a regular microphone, you can use the stand. That's fine. I, it bothers me so much. Oh, I don't know why, because they just look like a conductor up there with their hands the whole time. Hmm, interesting. I, I just don't. You've never done a show where you had to do it like that. Oh, with like a mic broke or something. Yeah, I have, but I'm like the worst. At you don't that, like? Dude. Yeah, I don't like. I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah, I think it's so unnatural when I don't know. When they're doing on late one of the late night shows, they don't hold the mic and it looks weird. Colbert doesn't have a mic. Is that it? Well, I don't think uh, no, not, they, not, not when they're no, doing their when, monologues. No, when they do the when they have the stand up oh, guests. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. It's just a lot of hands. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. I don't know. I just think it's un- it might be the late night show. It might be that's yeah. so funny that we both do comedy and really <laughs> <laughs> don't watch them. <laughs> I mean, this has been going down forever though, you know. Yeah. If you were gonna be asked, I mean, which is there a late night show you'd want to do at this point? Conan's not around anymore. That was kind of Conan like would have obviously been because yeah. that's like what we watched as kids. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, now we'd have to just be like the big, big James one would, would be around. the Tonight Show. <laughs> like if if I got the yeah. Tonight Show, like everyone that I ever knew Jimmy in my Fallon. life would be like, wow, he did Yeah, it. that's cool. You know? Yeah, I mean, yes, it's a, still a very cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, that's, yes, it's amazing. But I just think less people see it than they used to. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, most people would watch it on YouTube the next day. Anyway. Almost all of them. If anyone <laughs> sees it, yeah, it's the next day on YouTube. Especially yeah. you as the stand-up comedian, for sure, they're only watching that on YouTube. Yeah, That is fine. We were, uh, you came in, and I was watching Pete Davidson's monologue on SNL, Yeah, and they gave him a microphone. At yeah. Because he came out, no microphone, and then when he went into his bits, I don't. I haven't they seen gave the monologue, but I like it just because of that now. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, I guess I didn't think about that. That's cool. No that's just him being like, no, I'm a stand-up comedian. This is how I'm doing it. Like, yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, I think Chappelle did it with a microphone. Yeah. Uh, Louis C.K., scandal noted. Because uh, when people do stand-up and they're not using the microphone, I think in a way it implies that they're, like, bigger than stand-up. Hmm, they're like, this is... I'm bigger than the microphone. I'm bigger than the show. I don't want this this tiny little thing to be in the way of me and the audience. Do you do anything like that in your shows to connect with the audience? <laughs> like, I've heard people say, like, oh, when you come out, like you, you go past the mic into the audience and like slap some hands, shake some hands, and then go back to be like, "Hey, I appreciate you guys for coming." Um, I definitely use the like kind of language to make it like, like we're doing this. This is we our show together. tonight. Yeah, for I went sure. through a phase where I'd step off the stage and go sure. into the audience. I was doing that a lot pre-COVID. Yeah, and then I remember coming back from COVID at an open mic, trying to do that, and they were like, "The the." The bar owners do not want you to get close to people. <laughs> like you can't get that close to people. So of that course. like scared me off of doing it actually. Yeah. I mean, whatever your thing is, it just has to be authentic to your personality. Honestly, I feel that I connect with most of the audience. Like if I go up there and like and I just say what I'm feeling initially, like if I'm nervous, like I'll just be like, I'm nervous right yeah, now. And like that people will laugh. It's disarming. Like, yeah, because you just called your shot. Yeah, you're you know? being in, yeah. In the moment. Yeah. Kind of thing. You did improv? I did do improv, <laughs> yes. I did. So you're all about being in the moment. <laughs> It's funny, I did do improv before stand-up, and I like read all these books and took all these classes and stuff, and now that I've done stand-up for like seven years, I'm like, I think I would now get it. Like, if I, if I started improv all over again, I think I now would understand it after doing yeah. comedy for seven years. It's most things, you know? Yeah. You gotta do it. So I never really uh, let you finish off, so you're, you would you call yourself more of a storyteller now? Oh, you said joke writer. You're like, joke. I do jokes. I do jokes. I definitely do jokes. And well, we're I just... all trying to do jokes up there. I think. <laughs> well, if you boil people, it down. Some people aren't. Some people are telling, trying to uh, tell a story, or they're trying. Like to... who? Um, and, I mean, best storytellers ben working. I mean, at your no, local just level, just sure. No, just... But just even on national level, like best storytellers, like Ali Sadiq, he's always telling long form. Uh, what's that dry bar guy? Uh, Shane Smith. He has one special. It's a thirty-minute story. It is so mm -hmm. impressive. It's called the Animal. It's amazing. Check it I out. I mean, it YouTube. has like pops built in, right? It I mean, does. Like... like he's and he's funny throughout it. But the whole thing when he gets to the end, you know, it's the end, and that's that's a very cool thing about stories. Yeah, yeah. Jokes you just are rattling off forever. You okay. know, <laughs> so rattling a... off forever. <laughs> that's how I feel. I don't know about <laughs> that till I run out. Yeah, you know, kind of a thing. <laughs> how that... did you put your set together? Um, I mean, I I try to develop some sort of arc. Like it starts off where it's like here's jokes about being like a kid. Yeah, here's your, your chunks. Yeah, here's a chunk about like you know domestic life. Here's like a, a chunk about like jobs I've had, and then here's like some random stuff or whatever. And then yeah, dirty joke. I've been hearing a lot of people doing one 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 man shows kind of thing. Like Janae did her one woman show. I think that's very a cool. A couple different people did that. I was thinking about trying to do that all about like jobs I've had. Yeah. I think pe people looking do for that. work, and people do it still in like a very stand up y way. Like Mike Birbiglia, he's great yeah, at making yeah. it very stand up y still. I just think with something like that, you got to have a point to what you're doing. Like, there has to be some sort of arc in there. I it's think it's hard a, to work in America. That, that, that's a point. If you want to make that point, yeah, for <laughs> yeah. sure. Like, yeah. that, that's awesome. But I think our system have, is broken. Yeah, I think it's just, <laughs> I think it's more difficult in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. You have to yeah. find, find your through line, as they say. Sorry, keep cutting you off, man. I'm sorry about that. No, I want to get better at it. No, you're good. Don't worry. You'll edit it out. So. No, <laughs> it looks. It just sounds like you're patient the whole time. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I think I should. <laughs> well, thanks for coming down, man. I know you're. You know, did a lot this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Looking back, would you do anything different? You know, it's so early to tell in the whole. Uh, we'll see what the, the edit holds. More perspective. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But honestly, right now I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it all. Um, no regrets. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no regrets. <laughs>
that's a lot of shows. Thursday, Friday, and then two on Saturday. Yeah, four it, shows. You switch anything up, or was it just yeah, like, I I'm a lot saying of stuff. the same thing? Yeah, so the first two days I did the same thing, but on so Thursday I did it and it bombed, and then Friday I did it and it went great, and then Saturday I intentionally tried to really hammer the jokes that maybe I stammered through on Friday. Okay, yeah, yeah. and then I did a few extra things to be like, well, can I? Kind of bonus track at it yeah <laughs> and they worked so i i don't yeah i'll see how it all edits together but uh were you more pre- did you feel more pressure on friday to like do something did you do anything different take more cocaine adderall uh well i caffeine i did not sleep from thursday to friday it was like <laughs> you were really stressing huh? i was the most i've stressed out in a while i was oh, like okay. wow i'm gonna blow this like <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna not show up when i need to show was there, up was there a possibility of you not putting anything out uh yeah i mean if it was <laughs> okay. b- bad was i would have just been like i don't know what you're talking about i never said i was gonna <laughs> record anything i was there to support my friend sammy <laughs> 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 i'd have denied everything uh but no i i just was way more present on friday and also it was like you have to you have to get it this time. Like, and the fact that I had already blown it, it was like, you can't do worse than not yeah, getting yeah. it. You know, yeah, you, you already go. did the worst possible scenario. Pressure's off. So it was, in a way, it was, yeah, pressure's off. I mean, how, halfway through the show, were you just like, on Thursday, where you're like, this is going bad? Yeah. I mean, I, I knew it was going bad. So it was a snowball effect kind of a thing. Yeah. It is funny, though, because I was just like, I'm just going to pronounce all these words like as exactly as i can in case i need to punch it into a better show <laughs> wow i mean at least you're trying to salvage something yeah i was just trying to yeah i don't know thursday i think i was just way too stressed there was just so many details and moving parts to make this thing happen and uh yeah i think i was just really in my head about it and honestly i think if you want to record something great it has to just be like a normal normal show well it's never really a normal i mean because yeah. there's always more pressure on it because you know you're recording. right and the recording is really a show that never existed right because it's you you're typically right. the best of several shows right. yeah so yeah th- that's the thing if, i was thinking about too is even if this comes out like a little rougher or whatever if i stammer through a premise and but it's still with like the best take or whatever it's like at least that actually happened yeah it's like real. it is real i think there's something charming about that so it's going to be digital? Are you going to print out some CDs? <laughs> oh, what are you doing? I, I, her Best Buy won't take them anymore. So. <laughs> no, it's DVDs and Blu-rays. <laughs> They're still doing CDs? That'd be crazy. Uh, I think they have records there they for sure. They have records yeah. now. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it'll be, I mean, almost it'll entirely. It'll be Taylor Swift and then your record at a Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I would love that. <laughs> yeah, just an end cap because there's only six of us left there. But uh, Yeah, it'll be mostly digital. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll sell download codes. I've seen people do that. People do like when you have something to sell after shows, and this will actually be a product I'm not embarrassed of. Yeah, know? okay, like yeah, yeah. Something I put a lot of work into. You you sell things you're embarrassed of at the end of shows? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have. I've sold, like, koozies. <laughs> koozies are cool. People like those. It's fine. It, I mean, if you're trying to make a bunch of money, it's, like, 10 cents to make a koozie, and people give you anywhere between a dollar and, like, 10 bucks if you just do by donation. So it's the best way to make a bunch of money, but you feel like an idiot. Mm. You're like, at least I do. I'm like, I didn't want to be a koozie salesman. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's like the more you do comedy, the more dumb little hustles you pick up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, hopefully it has something to do with your set. Like I was trying to do this thing with moon water, and then I got <laughs> these little like vials to be like, I'm selling moon water. Uh, you got the merch before you got the bit to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I was like, oh, this worked good once. I was like, I can work on it, make it good. I have this whole thing about my wife being a witch, <laughs> yeah, or being in a co- uh, coven thing. And I was like, I can just expand this. That's and so I was like funny. in the moon water, so I just have this like box of vials that I haven't. Uh, that's so and moon funny. water waiting in the, a dark corner because you can't get sunlight on it. So yeah, gotcha. That's I mean, how you know it's legit moon water people. Okay, you gotta transport it in a bag or something. You gotta go make the. I mean, at that <laughs> point, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so like olive oil, does it need to be in a green glass? <laughs> it might be, it might help actually. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, man. <laughs> every every joke you write from now on is the punchline has to try to be moon water <laughs> <laughs> so i walked in i'm like what is this moon water <laughs> so anyway help me with the fucking bit dude <laughs> yeah <laughs> Think of any good punchlines for me. That's so funny. It sounds like it could be the punchline for any dirty joke, but I don't really know what it means. <laughs> I sprayed my moon. No, sorry. That yeah, sprayed's bad. gross always. Yeah, sprayed. Sprayed's not good. I don't like that. 
Yeah, just, so is it just like dirty stuff doesn't really resonate with you? Uh, You're not like, so I came in this girl's fucking... Well, I think one... Moonwater over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think one, I've had the same girlfriend for like 12 years, so that... Does she not want you to talk about her in her sets? I mean, in your sense. No, she doesn't care at all, but like, I adore her, so I don't want to say yeah, anything. Yeah, you want to be like, this is my, <laughs> yeah, she's a real like, bitch. Also, I hate when guys do that. It's like, yeah, my wife sucks. It's like, dude, you chose your wife. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, you suck That's the most dude. expressive I've ever seen your eyes right now. <laughs> it is funny that yeah. you're very- Yeah, see, I was selling it. <laughs> yeah. well, very passionate. Callback. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I like her, so I don't really have that many jokes. I don't- what am I going to make fun of her for? She know? sounds perfect then. I mean, we're all perfect. No, but. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, find, I find material in my life. So, you know, like the coven thing, my wife it, being in a coven and that scares me. Yeah, but that's like, I mean, it's about your wife for sure, but it's also, it's a little bit bigger. It's more than, about me being scared of yeah, than things that. that are fake. Yeah. Yes, it's your relationship. I'm scared with, of monsters. Yeah, <laughs> as supernatural a man. or whatever, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, uh, dirty jokes, I, I don't know, I... I I did purposely write some dirty jokes uh, because I was like, because I was like, what if I can't do it? You oh, know, interesting. like, because I I kind of take the approach to like stand up, like if, if you're trying to get good at like comedy, hypothetically, you should be able to write about any topic. Interesting. But, like if you really want to be a craftsman at this, like you because yeah, you've read the books. I have read the books. Okay, <laughs> name <laughs> that, some. Uh, just in case anybody wants to look, you the, know. the comics toolbox. That was one I read. Okay. There's a late night one that's really good. Uh, the late night, the war for late night. I've read that. I've listened to that on audio. Uh, no, it's one about writing, but it just teaches you how to like write through monologue jokes. And if you can write monologue jokes, you can write anything, man. Because it's like you gotta do it so fast, and it's basically no emotional attachment to them because it's usually something that just happened. Yeah, yeah. It's you don't like have time to process it really. And very new, and there's a shelf life. So. Yeah, interesting. Other books. I don't know. I also just like reading uh, comedians like uh, biographies and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the, the dirty yeah, joke, clean joke thing is always interesting because it was something I never noticed about myself really until pe- other people started pointing it out to me. They were like, you have a lot of clean stuff. Interesting. Um, I mean, most of my stuff's pretty clean. Yeah. I think dirty stuff, it's also like, I don't know, you gotta, if you, if you wanna do a bunch of sex jokes, you gotta be having a bunch of sex. You, know? you think? <laughs> I think. You think people think I'm having a lot of sex? <laughs> or if, or maybe you're doing sex jokes about not getting sex. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. you have to have some sort of struggle Evan with it. Evan Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I don't, I don't know. I just don't have any hot takes on it. Like anytime I'm having sex, I'm like, I'm so grateful for this experience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make fun of it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Very honest. Yeah. Uh, all right, yeah, well, cool, man. Thank you so much for being on. I can't wait to hear the album when it comes out. Yeah, dude, you'll be one of. The, I'll give you a preview of it when I uh, start getting it assembled together. You'll right be one on. of the first. Cool. Yeah. So we to end the pod. We've been doing uh, either a pitch for a movie. Well, you've already done all the lightning round questions. Have we done a pitch for a movie? Yeah, we've made a couple movies. Oh, I we think. have. I yeah. Don't know about that. Yeah. A couple. Uh, we made like a snowboarding movie. Oh, interesting. Uh, with it was me, you, and Harrison Garcia. Oh wow. And then oh, we did. Yeah. I think we did like hello a, or. Goodbye, Ringo. Hello, <laughs> yeah, Ringo. Yeah, uh, okay, well, Ringo. Okay. Yeah, what happened to that? Uh, well, Harrison bought a bar. Oh. Because <laughs> he blames you for ending the podcast. No, I'm just uh, <laughs> no. no, he, I mean, we both wish we could still do it, but he is as busy as I think I am. I mean, owning a business. Yeah, it's so busy. A lot more, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then the one time you and I, we did something with Jason Momoa. I can't remember. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like a sci-fi no, I romance, I think it was. I, I can't remember because I've done so many episodes now. <laughs> You've done a lot, yeah. Have I done I do more pretty- than Patrick Scott? Creeping towards it. I think uh, Royce Rosewood actually has the most episodes I've done with him. So All right, like a dozen? Something like that, yeah. All right, well, um, we're like halfway there. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah, you're so busy. I mean, I'd reach out more. Yeah, I well, I appreciate busy you man, busy out. man. Yeah. Uh, well, and I was just thinking about this one yesterday for a lightning round question: cookies or donuts? Ooh, I'm gonna say donuts. Wow, I like a good. Co- I've been so into insomnia cookies right now. They're great, dude. They're so good. That's a very tough question: cookies or donuts? Because they're they both serve the same purpose for me. I don't eat a donut for breakfast. I, I like to eat a donut. For dessert at night, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. Yeah, I think I was just talking to my wife. Whenever I think about pastries or having a pastry, it's late night. Yep, every it's single not time in the morning. Yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. And all fucking bakeries close at like fucking <laughs> two in the afternoon. Of course, yeah. But I think it's way better for a night thing as well. Go to cookie. You going for a chocolate based cookie or like a you know a chocolate chip cookie? I like a chocolate chip. I like a, I like a snickerdoodle. Oh yeah, snickerdoodle. you I like that that like it's got like a different mouthfeel. No, <laughs> it's like got a taste that like hits your jaw differently. Yeah, the snickerdoodle. Absolutely. I think it's just a unique flavor that I don't. Yeah, encounter it's not just a like a sugar cookie. Well, yeah, it's, it's a sugar cookie that has something else. It's in got it. something extra though. Yeah, it's I like, like it. I don't know if it's the egg or what what it is in a snickerdoodle. I'll have to ask my wife. Yeah. Uh, former yeah. pastry chef. That's why I like a lot of cookies, dude. Any? I mean, you only said two. Uh, lemon. Anytime Ooh, like a lemon cookie. I, I dude, we gotta do. We should do another cookie bracket. <laughs> yeah. Have you, did you Did you listen to that? List Isn't the lemon the what you guys shit the most on? <laughs> <laughs> they They did. I they did. you like lemon? I like lemon. See, I think it's a sophisticated flavor. You yes, have it's had, a subtle taste. Yes, you've had a lot of uh, pastries having a pastry chef wife, so you yeah. know the nuance of yes. flavors. Yeah. I think yeah. If you don't like lemon, you're an amateur. Yeah, well, not like Andreas, who's only his uh, fanciest thing he's done is getting a cookie at a at a food a food court in a, a mall. That's sad. That's... <laughs> Go to an actual cookie place. I know, it's right? Awesome. Go yeah. to fucking <laughs> yeah. Even at Samia, I mean, that's like that's great. Th- those are great cookies. It's so much better than a grocery store cookie. Are you crazy? Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Go get a real cookie. You're, yeah, you're, even you're like worth the, it. The grocery store donuts aren't great. No, but a donut from a donut place, yeah, man. Dude. What's your go-to donut place? <sighs> I mean, I go to Voodoo a lot because uh, I just I, I'm on Broadway a lot. Mm. I'm um, a Winchell's guy. Winchell's nice. What's your favorite donut? I mean, a Long John, a Eclair oh, with the with the filling. Yeah, so good custard filling. I like I like a maple donut. Ooh, with the custard filling. Yeah, absolutely. Dude. Fuck yeah, dude. Long yeah, jo- yeah. Yeah, I do like that. You don't get maple in a lot of flavors. Yeah. except pancakes. So it's absolutely. nice to have it in a it's nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we get each other, JD. <laughs> we okay, understand let's not it. go on the road. Let's just go get some pastries. Yeah, that's what it sounds like we should do. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're gonna do after this pod. Uh, all right, man. Well, maybe if we do another bracket, I'll. I'll uh... Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> we did a donut bracket not too long ago, on like the three hundredth episode. Oh, uh, was it with JD and uh, or with uh. uh Patrick Scott and no, Andreas. With Paul Carroll. Yeah. 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 I wife. didn't know if it was always, if you always brought the Chupacabros back together. No, it's so hard. He's got a second kid now. Patrick's just, he's done. Oh, I thought he's you meant Andreas with, for a second. I was like, what? <laughs> Andreas Andre, got a union job, so he's always in Vegas now. Yeah, dude. Like, he's I think he's it. like doing some mob shit, basically. Yeah. I mean, unions and mobs. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. Although I'm a union man. Don't don't get me wrong. Of course. I'm a union man. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, don't tell him I'm calling in to go to <laughs> Don't tell my union. <laughs> Uh, Although I think the union would be on my side. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you so much. I'll let the guests sign us off however you see fit. I will say we'll kind of forever. Be excellent to each other. Uh, come to Comedy Save the Video Star, October 26th. Although this might be out afterwards. November 16th, maybe. Then if you're not doing that one. Is this a November podcast? Well, I've already, I have two in the can. Okay. So well, probably. It, it's going to be towards the end of October then. Okay, I have no idea what shows I will be having, but uh, edwardbellcomedy.com has all my shows there. So check it out. No sign off? What do you want me to say? Um, Fucking donut, baby. Uh, yeah, lemon cookie forever. Nice. <laughs>